monsters are real. They know where you live. They're under your bed. They're coming for you. Are you afraid? Run. Okay. I'm guessing neither of you have had eggnog before. Santa is not real! Of course not. Of course not. Elves are real. But, like, they're different. The secret masters just told me I am so angry. What, what do you mean Santa's not real? I, I want to talk about it. I could have told you both that. Are you, are you serious? You guys both thought it, Santa was real? Y'all are lying to me. <laughs> no. I we wouldn't lie to you. We work in a... Shut up! Santa's real. We work in a monster department. Santa is real. Hey. Santa's real. Buddy. Stop. Santa's real. Don't Let touch me, me Esteban. Let me go get Don't touch me. Santa's real, right? Okay, yeah, yep. Deacon, Deacon. Baltimore. <laughs> oh, no. Merry Christmas, agents. Merry Christmas, sir. Baltimore. Where Welcome back, Deacon. Hey, Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas. It's at that time of year again. <laughs> it's that time of year again. You're going to get two puddings for being such a good boy. Oh, I'm so excited. And thank you all for agreeing to work this Christmas. Well, thank you for agreeing to our double super overtime. Of course, it's the least we could do. Uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. <sighs> Unfortunately, there is no time to waste. Monsters sleep for nobody, and Sword never takes a day off. No, sir. This week you'll be heading to the Great White North, Shockwood, Minnesota. We have reports of a possible vampire attack. Nothing confirmed yet, but the sheriff there is an old friend of mine, Warren Nash. He will have more details for you when you arrive. Uh, you should get going post haste. It's going to be a long drive, but um, I have confidence that you will handle this in the utmost professional manner possible as befitting a sword agent. And if you get it done quick enough, you'll make it back in time for the holiday party. Ooh. We are going to have eggnog, not for you, and punch. Punch? Okay. No yes. hot chocolate? Uh, oh, hot chocolate, yes. Thank you, Esteban. That's my favorite. Well, be sure to add that to the list. And uh, I think Fred was going to bring in some Vienna sausages or something. Okay. Um, I'm not, that's his tradition. We'll just let that slide. Kosher, of course. Okay, sir. Uh, vampire in Minnesota. We'll get that done and be back in time for presents. Yes. All right. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. And to all a good night. Except for you. You guys have to go to work. Okay. See you when you get back. Yes, sir. All right. Okay, Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, sir. Happy New Year. Have a good one. Bye. Ooh, two puddings. Yeah, two. Isn't that great, Deacon? Exciting. You get two puddings and you feel, you feel good? You feel ready for this mission? Yeah, why wouldn't I? Oh, yeah. No, just making sure. Just checking on you. Yeah, no, I feel great. Do you want to grab those puddings now, and then we'll just we'll head on out? No, I usually save them for later. Something to look forward to. Sure. Yeah. Right. For okay. After. Yep. All right, everybody. Let's go have a good Christmas mission, everybody. Especially Deacon, getting that uh, getting that uh, shotgun seat, bud, right in the front where you like to sit. Yeah. Well, the, 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 why are you guys being so nice to me right now? It's Christmas, bud. Just that's just the air of Christmas. Everybody's just jolly and bright. That's, wow, I love this so much. Yeah. Right, best ready. holiday. Let's go, bud. All right. Good. We'll meet you there. Go ahead. Okay. I'm so scared. <laughs> I am so scared. Ah, ah, my eyes! <laughs> my eyes! <sighs> Sir, your hat fell off. There you go. <laughs> we join our monster hunters this week on their way to Sharpwood, Minnesota, the Great White North, to investigate reports of possible vampirism. It's a quite a long trip from Area 51. You guys are in Esteban's bullet, heading up the highway. Um, it is a cool December 24th, 1970-something. Uh, you guys are taking your road trip uh, up north in Esteban's bullet. Uh, as you are heading north, you see the scenery begins to change around you from the Nevada desert to the uh, more northern like pine trees and you start to see snow and uh, maybe a, an exciting unfamiliar sight for some of you 
uh, for some other of you, Esteban maybe reminds you of back home in New Jersey, your winters that you spent there. Um, you know, you're, you are all a little bit disappointed that you got to work, you know, Christmas, but that's the job. You know, monsters don't wait for nobody. Uh, so you finally arrive, um, pulling into Sharpwood, Minnesota. You see it's a quaint mountain town a la Twin Peaks style. Um, you uh, pass the sign that says uh, Sharpwood. You are on your way to the uh, sheriff's office to meet Sheriff Warren Nash, who is the one who contacted SWORD, the Supernatural and Occult Reconnaissance Division of the FBI, um, and reported this vampire attack. Uh, and that is where you find yourselves now, as you pull up right outside the sheriff's office. Snow lightly falling all around you. It's a, it's a brisk 25 degrees outside. Uh, you have your FBI issue winter coats and, and headgear uh, to protect you from the elements. Um, and he'll, uh, he'll take a deep breath and turn the car off and, uh, and head outside and watch his breath come out as he steps into the cold. Esteban, I have a problem. Already? You're not even out of the car. Yeah, I can't roll the window up. It's stuck. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Don't you get paid? I thought, why aren't you gonna like buy some of those fancy automatic roll-up windows for your house or what? The window was fine before you messed with it. Yeah, I used my power to move it. Don't do that, it's I moved, sensitive. I move it too hard. I can tell. The handle came off in my hand. Here it is, see? Roll, act under pressure. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, six. <laughs> that is a failure. So as you're uh, rolling it up, you see the window only comes up about halfway, and you can't get it to go up any higher. Uh, and it is freezing cold outside. This, the wind is blowing snow into the car. You can see the seats are starting to get a thin layer of frost. I run to the trunk, and I open it, and I get like a garbage bag tarp thing and I come over to the side and I tape it around the window and I just look at Esteban really, uh, Esteban, I look at Deacon really mad. It's a bit drafty in the foyer, isn't it, Holly? You're the worst. It looks so dumpy now. Uh, hey, say you all. You with the FBI. Yes, sir. You see, uh, on the steps of the, uh, sheriff's office that you've parked outside, um, you see a uh, an older, you would guess to be maybe late fifties, early sixties man, um, but he's he's built like uh, like what's that guy's name? David Harbor from uh, <laughs> from Stranger Things. He's like built fat. He's got like a, a barrel chest, um, thick beard. He actually is dressed like Santa Claus. So he's got the red jacket and the red hat and everything on. But his his thick white beard is his own. It's not like a fake beard. Um, tan, leathery, old face, wrinkles, deep cracks. Um, and he's standing on the steps of the, of the porch uh, of the sheriff's office looking at you all. Oh, um, I'm sorry, Santa. We must have uh, taken a wrong turn. Can you uh, lead us to uh, Sheriff Warren Nash. Nash? You're looking at him. <gasps> Welcome to the North Goddamn Pole. Oh my God, I love it here. It's actually, he's really nice here as I'm finishing the tape on the window. <laughs> you see the outside of the, uh, of the police station is um, festively decorated with red and green uh, garlands and, and ribbons and streamers and Christmas lights abound. Christmas, uh, those like wireframe uh, reindeer with the lights wrapped all around him. Uh, he's just standing there respectingly. Um, well, it's about damn time you showed up. Sorry, the, my car's not really built for snow, built more for the desert, but uh, let's uh, get this underway. Yeah, you're going to need to get some chains on those tires, son. You want to drive around these parts. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get that worked out real easy. This reminds me of the childhood that I never had. How can it remind you of the childhood if you never I don't know, had just it? Just what I think it would be like. Oh, okay. If I had one. <laughs> if uh, I had it. <laughs> I never have uh, Christmas. I don't know what they do. They always feed me a special meal December 24th, and then I wake up December 26th like nothing ever happened. Wow. Yeah. You guys are the most depressing team I have ever had. We're depressing? Yeah. Yeah, for me? Yeah. You're depressing. I'm so sad you've never Fucking had one Christmas. Sleeping in your car I don't stuff. sleep in my car. 
Well, no uh, one's sleeping in that car now with the with the window like that. Yeah, where are we supposed to sleep now? Can we just go inside? Can we just go inside? Yeah, let's hurry up. Come on in. I push them up the stairs. He, he leads you inside. You see the inside of the uh, sheriff's office is, again, beautifully decorated. Very, very festive. Um, you see Sharpwood uh, 50th annual Christmas party. Uh, banners everywhere. Um, nobody else is in here except for one other uniformed uh, sheriff's deputy. Uh, you see his name tag uh, says Deputy Hart. Um, H-A-R-T. Uh, and he's just, he's kind of like leaning his back up against the wall. He's got a, a cup of uh, morning coffee. It's probably about 8 a.m. right now. It's, uh, you see it's steaming up uh, out of his hands. He's kind of got it bundling up, keeping himself warm. Um, and he is dressed like a little elf. He's got his, he's got his sheriff's uniform on underneath, but he's wearing like a green vest and then one of like the green and red stripes hats with the pointy ears. Um, and uh, you see that monogrammed into the, into the lining of his hat says, uh, Santa's best elf, uh, and he's he's just sitting there with his cup of joe. Um, Sheriff Nash uh, pushes the door open, leads you all inside, uh, and immediately, right in the foyer of the sheriff's office, you see the body of another sheriff's deputy on the ground, um, strewn about, pool huge pool of blood all around his body, uh, just greeting you as soon as you walk in. Um, Sheriff Nash kind of crosses his arms and stands right in front of the body and just looks down at him and then turns over his shoulder to you guys and says, 50 years, 50 years this town has had a Christmas party for the Sheriff's Department and we've never had anything like this. Who would have the balls to murder one of my deputies right under my very nose? Thank you all for coming as quickly as you did. If you do a little investigating here, I'm sure, you, sure you'll see the reason I called you. I'm damn good at my job, but I let this man down and I need to call in some experts. So I'm hoping you guys can help. My first question for you is, you found him like this. Yes, Deputy Thomas. Uh, he was here watching the station last night. Uh, Sharpwood is kind of a, I'm sure you noticed, a small town. We don't really have a large force, pretty much just us. Uh, some of the other boys went home for the holidays. We don't really have nothing in the ways of violent crime up here, not usually. We figured skeleton force would be enough for the holidays. As I said, the Christmas party every year, everyone loves it. We have the invite the whole town over. We have a big cookout, potluck. It's quite a deal, but unfortunately we're gonna have to cancel this year. Uh, but yes, this is Deputy Thomas. He was in charge of watching the station last night. I'd like to investigate the body. Go ahead and roll investigate a mystery. I got my little gloves and my magnifying glass. And you, you guys can help her out if you'd like. Um, Deacon, can you help her? I have an idea. Yeah, but real quick, um, they said it was vampirism, right? Yeah, the briefing said thoughts of vampires. There's a pool of blood around the body. Vampires usually suck their victims dry. I don't know about dry, but yeah, there's usually some blood taken out. That is weird. Check the wounds, make sure. I would like to roll to assist Holly. Yes. While they're looking for... Oh. Wow. Twelve. Ten, so you get a plus one? Yep. And that's a success, so no danger. So you have a 13, 13, which means you got like a super duper ultra success. <laughs> um, Deacon and Holly, you guys lean down to investigate the body and you make that astute um, observation about the pool of blood. Uh, you very obviously, you see two puncture wounds on the neck, um, very clean, uh, evenly spaced apart uh, with dried blood leaking out and pooling all around the body. Uh, you see the victim looks to be in a state of shock on their face. Uh, that is what you observe about the body. There's nothing else really to of note. Um, you have, uh, as a result of your successful role, you have two questions you can ask if there's anything that you, uh, any further information you'd like to try to glean. Did the um, murder happen in this room? Looking around, uh, Holly, you took an elective uh, in blood splatter anal uh, analysis and you can 
look around the area and you do see that it does look like the murder happened in this spot and he fell dead. Is there anything else in the room that looks like peculiar, like open window or broken stuff or anything like that? Um, no, no signs of forced entry, uh, no signs of any sort of struggle really. It looks like um, whatever got him took him by surprise and killed him almost instantaneously. Are we sure that the wounds in his neck were actually teeth marks and not just a tool made to look like teeth marks? Well, uh, Sheriff Nash uh, is watching help nearby while you guys are investigating, and he, he kind of uh, leans over to you guys and says, well, you see, this is the reason I called. Um, we have uh, Deputy Thomas um, was beloved by the community. We take pride in our Sheriff's Department uh, and our relationship with the people he had. There's nobody in town who would have a, a motivation to, to murder him. Uh, and I'm not one to be the superstitious type, but uh, I hope that we can be candid in saying, in my younger days, I messed around with the supernatural and occult reconnaissance division department. And uh, I've run into some of your agents in the field before, uh, before I retired up here. <laughs> He looks around at the sheriff's department, looks down at his badge, retirement. Um, so I knew right away something was up. I didn't want to waste any time. That's a smart assumption of you. My question is, but if vampires bite your neck, they don't just use the two fangs, they use their whole jaw. There would be more than just two marks. Not to mention the, the dried blood on the outside. Seems like wasted food. The pool of blood pool all of around blood. The guy died instantly. That's not normal in that's a vampire not a, attack. That's not a bite. If you're bit, no. you're, you, the blood's coming out, you die from that. You have time to react for how fleeting that is. He had a look of shock on his face. So. Well, that could be a shock of, of, oh my god, a vampire's eating me. Right, but you know, things like gorgons, you know, if they stare at their victims, they, they're frozen. They froze, fall into stone. I, I, Maybe those wounds are superficial. They could be. I think maybe it, it may be something pretending to be a vampire, and those are fake teeth puncture wounds. I don't believe them to be true vampire fangs. I'm with you on that. Hmm. Do we have um, toxicology in the 1970-somethings? <laughs> uh, depends on what you're trying to, to learn about. Well, maybe we could send them off to toxicology and see if there's any poison or anything in the system. Uh, you know, Holly, that it's just the three of you guys out here on your own. Even if you were to send anything back to the lab, you wouldn't get the results for a few days, so it wouldn't help you currently. It's Christmas Eve. No one's working, and so we're the only three agents on staff right now. Okay, well, do you know anything about, I don't know, uh, teenagers doing some kind of rituals or shady people around in the dark? Anything that ever seems off around this about this town? We have teenagers in town, but they pretty much just smoke cigarettes and drink beer behind the ice skating rink. It's a ski town. I mean, there's, it's, we get the occasional tourists, but, you know, there's much bigger uh, ski resorts, you know, outside of town. So we just kind of get the cheap ones. I wouldn't say we have anything in the way of, you know, uh, unnerving type characters. Like I said, we have very little violent crime here. That's why I, again, looks at his badge. That's why I retired up here. I, it's an easy way to keep the pension going and, uh, you know, not have to do too much work. What do you know about Officer Thomas personally? Was there anything he was in, maybe, people he, he used to run with? He was one of our newest uh, deputies. He's been on the force for about the last three years, but he's won Santa's Best Elf all the last three years running. Why not this year? He's dead. Oh, so that was a posthumous award. Yes, uh, Deputy Hart over there is taking the loss quite hard. They were partners. Um, but I guess when something horrible happens like this, we just kind of stick tr to tradition. Um, and as silly as it may seem, it felt right to continue on. Uh, we've kept this quiet. We don't want anyone in town to get wind that something horrible like this has happened. We don't want to cause a panic, so we've just been keeping it up for show. And as I said, it's only been a few hours anyway, so we're hoping that uh, we can contain this. How about if I go speak with our uh, friend Deputy Hart, and you two, if you want, if you can come with me or if you want to maybe look around the station. 
Yeah, I was gonna look around outside, maybe find any evidence of someone sneaking around or any kind of entrance. Yeah, I'll go with him. Okay. I'll go see what uh, uh, Heavy Heart over there has to say. Nice. So Deacon, you approach Deputy Hart, who's uh, leaning with his back against the wall, steaming a cup of coffee in a little styrofoam cup that he's just sipping on. Um, he looks completely shell-shocked. I walk up a uh, Merry Christmas, officer. I'm sorry it had to be on uh, such grim tidings. I understand that uh, the fellow over there was your partner, Deputy Thomas. Yeah, yeah, he was. Um, damn good kid. Newer to the force, newer than the rest of us. Uh, kind of took him under my wing. He deserved every every ounce of that best elf hat. This is... He kind of takes it off and looks at it. Puts it back on. It's a hollow victory. Well, with any luck, by the end of the day, we'll have uh, we'll have this all wrapped up with a nice pretty bow and put it behind us, but... um. So, Deputy Hart didn't have any enemies in town. Pretty well-liked guy. Uh, I'm Deputy Hart. And I'm sorry, Deputy Thomas. Uh, this is a nice place. There's, there's, no, there's no crime, no robbery, no murder to speak of. I mean, maybe once or twice a year, somebody gets a little bit too into their cups and does something that they regret in the morning. But I wouldn't say we have anything in, in the way of, of true hardened criminals. And definitely nobody who harbors any grudges against us. Okay, one last question, Deputy Hart. Um, he was murdered last night, correct? Yeah, yeah, I guess we assume that. I mean, Warren Nash and I, Sheriff Nash and I, we found him this morning. And he was the only one in the station? He was the only one here last night, yeah. Now, is it staff 24 hours, or was he here a little later than usual? Uh, we took off probably around 10, maybe 11 last night, and he was supposed to take the the overnight shift and we'd relieve him in the morning. He was gonna be able to go home and spend Christmas uh, Christmas alone, I guess. It kinda of sounds sad when you say it like that. Okay, I'm sorry, one last follow-up question. Uh, does he have an apartment or a house nearby? That'd probably be our next point of investigation if nothing turns up here. Uh, yeah, he, he stays in an apartment okay. in town. Do you know where that is? Sure, he, I can get you the address. Thank you, and uh, you've been very helpful, Deputy Hart. I'm, I'm sorry about the loss of your friend. Thank you. Um, just do the best you can. Will do. Uh, Esteban and Holly, you guys are poking around outside the police station. You, you hear the heavy crunch of the snow <laughs> as your heavy uh, FBI boots you sink in. Um, I would like to investigate to see if there's anything amiss around the grounds and, and the, on the outside of the building. Roll investigate mystery. And I'll help him. Roll to help out. Give me some good aid, please. So yep. then I got a 10 as well. You do see near one of the back windows of the police station, you see um, big footprints in the snow leading off towards the forest. Uh, really big, like somebody was wearing snowshoes maybe. I'm sorry, big footprints or big footprints? It's up to you. <laughs> Do they look, do I see feet, like toe marks in the prints, or is it just like feet? These prints are old, probably left here last night or early this morning, and so the snow has, uh, has gathered a little bit around them and obscured most of the detail. You'd say if it was somebody, like a human foot, it'd probably be like a size 13 at least, or bigger. And it looks like they came from the woods, or they're leaving into the woods? You only see tracks leaving from the window to the woods. Okay. So they got in some other way and left this way. Perhaps in bat form. Perhaps they got in in bat form. Is there like a chimney, like kind of, uh, situation on the roof that a bat could fly in? There is a chimney on the roof of the Sheriff's Department. Give me a boost. Okay. <laughs> I'll like do the thing and then his boots probably hurt my fingers. I step really hard and I try, I try to get climb up to the roof. <laughs> okay, uh, let's use read a bad situation. Then you can roll to help him out. So on two mixed successes, uh, Holly, you start to boost Esteban up onto the roof. 
um, and you dig a hand into what you feel like is some solid purchase. And as you start to pull yourself up, all of the snow and, and ice that has been caked onto the roof slides off and you both fall off into a pile and pff, land on top of each other. And you each take one harm from all of the ice and snow falling on top of you and you all you both crumble into a pile on top of each other deacon you and and the sheriff and uh the deputy inside the station hear a big crash uh from outside i'll rush outside i like try to stick my hand up uh, into the window i'm like it's okay you see esteban's just just from the elbow up <laughs> pop out of the snow and wave. i stop rushing outside <laughs> um okay no uh, roof sheriff nash looks over to you and says uh very thorough your partner's uh, I think they're just trying to find a point of entry. Sure, sure. Um, like I said, I, I've had some dealings with S.W.O.R.D. in the past. I'm going to let you all do your thing here if you need me. Is there a stair access to the roof instead? <laughs> no, it's not like a roof that you're supposed oh, to go on. <laughs> it's just a regular roof. Okay, I have one more idea before I think our best bet is following these footprints. Okay. And uh, I go back inside, uh, and I would like to search uh, Deputy Thomas's desk for anything that may be of use. Is there anything suspicious on it? Uh, you you watch as they come inside. Snow caked around their eyebrows and stuck underneath <laughs> their hair. Their faces are like completely bright red with uh, frost. I want to investigate his desk and then I want to investigate his person. Like just rushed through his pockets. Uh, Holly investigated his person already and there's nothing to find. Then I'll just do his desk. No need to roll. Immediately you can see uh, on his desk he doesn't have anything hidden. He just has some pictures of him and uh, some other uh, sheriff's deputies. Um, and he has, it looks like he put these out for the, for the festivities. He has the last three years in a row that he's won Santa's best elf with the hat on. And he's got all of, uh, all of the other, uh, deputies around him and Sheriff Nafish is there and they're all have their mugs with them and they're all looking happy. I turn to Deacon and, and the sheriff and I go, well, we found tracks leading from one of the windows into the forest. I think that's our best bet for right now. Have you learned anything? Um, I've learned where uh, Deputy Thomas, uh, Deputy Hart was uh, nice enough to provide the location of his address. I was thinking um, maybe we'd find something there, but if you think there's more to be found outside, we can check out the footprints first. I have a way to figure out which one we should check first. Do you? <laughs> what are your guts telling you? I would like mind? to follow my guts Okay. And, and see which course of action would be the best. All right. Go ahead. Ooh, eight. That's a mixed success. Uh, the keeper tells me a general direction plus one forward. Uh, you have been a monster hunter, Esteban, for quite a while now. Um, and if there is one thing you've learned in all of your ten tenure that your veteran gut instinct is telling you, when there's a sign this obvious, it, it leads somewhere. Prince first. Do we have anything to go traipsing around in the snow? I don't want anyone falling in the snow drift and catching hypothermia. Sheriff Nash whips open a locker and he pulls out snowshoes and, and jackets and he uh, actually pulls out a shotgun from there. Nice. You see him, he starts loading some shells. He says, if whatever son of a bitch did this is hiding in those woods, we're going to get him. Nice. Vigilante justice style. He takes off his badge, puts it in his pocket. He's still dressed like Santa Claus. <laughs> oh we, uh, my God. We're not going to tell anybody. You don't need to take that yeah, off. Yeah, it's fine. Let, let me do things my way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let him have his moment. Sure. I think we could uh, use a few things out of the car to suit up. I, I, I try to do a cool guy kick open the front door. Roll act under pressure, do a cool guy kick open the door. Why would you do that? I'm going to do it cool. Does You're going to break their door, Esteban. Woo! Ten. <laughs> Coolest guy ever kicked open a door in your life. Unreal. Ooh, I have for the one for the one cut. I have sunglasses, and I kick open the door, and then it cuts back, and I don't have sunglasses on anymore. Holly like wipes off the snow from the door, and she apologizes to the guy. I I walk over and I cool guy click, and then beep, beep. the the trunk opens up, and uh, I look and I go, "What are you thinking?" I would like a big fat flashlight, please. Two hander. Deacon. Uh, maybe some sterno to make a campfire if it gets too cold or if we get, yeah. uh, you know, surrounded or stuck somewhere. All right. Good. I don't need it, but you do. The good old-fashioned flares. Ski mask? Everybody gets flares. We're not criminals. We don't use ski masks. Well, my face is cold. I fell in the snow. I get you a regular mask. Okay. 
the glow sticks. Always need the glow sticks. You never know. You never yeah, for know. those raves you yeah, go to. The um, deputy Hart uh, is standing near you guys, and he starts loading his revolver. Spins it. Says, "Let's get these bastards." Nice. Don't suppose the station has uh, snowmobiles. Well, we only have one, so oh, it wouldn't be I see. much use. Fuck. Fair enough. Okay. But uh, I've lived in Sharpwood for 20 years now, and um, I know these woods pretty well, so just stick by me, and I think we'll be okay. What about snacks? Granola bars. Thank you. You never know. Thank you. And one of those the mm-hmm. hot chocolate powders, the one in the bags. Keep the bag. I have my thermos thingy. That's hot water. No, we, we got the thing to make the fire. I'll make oh, the hot the water, and then I can make the, the, the hot chocolate. will be all right. Perfect. Ooh. A little pack of marshmallows. Put that in there. Perfect. Esteban, have you seen here be Halloween? You and your thermos. Close the trunk. <laughs> all right, Sheriff, where are we going? Well, show me where those tracks are, and then I can get us going from there. Click. My big fat flashlight. <laughs> yeah, the it's, one that has like the other hand. It's like, the daytime. One. It's like full daytime. It's daytime. It's yes. eight, eight in the morning. Whoa! It's, eight in the morning. <laughs> it's daytime. But your your industrial double handed like thick ass flashlight does shine a beam of light that's powerful enough, but it's still uh, still daytime. So I'm gonna doesn't... conserve the battery. Yeah. Like. <laughs> I show him to the around the side to the footprints. Okay. He gets down, picks up some snow. Let's go. Nice. Uh, and again, still dressed as Santa Claus, uh, he starts charging off into the woods. Holly's really uncomfortable. She's born and raised in Nevada. <laughs> yeah, it's fr- it's freezing cold. I mean, it's like probably uh, 20 yeah. degrees now. Can I um, try to discern anything else from the f- prints, like the general size of this thing, or is size it's 13. nothing? Like the size of the creature. Like how deep his prints go into the snow. And uh, stuff, stuff yeah, like you that. can roll investigative mystery on these prints. Okay. And you can get plus one because of your follow your guts. Yes, sir. Plus one ongoing. Let's go. Twelve. Sharpwood sits in the center of like these two twin peaks. And uh, so you're walking up into one of these uh, mountainous regions. Uh, and you've been hiking for maybe like a half hour now. And you're, so you... Uh, Take a moment just to settle down and figure out where to go next. Uh, the tracks begin to fade as the snow gets um, deeper and deeper and up into the mountains where the snowfall is heavier. It starts to obscure more of the tracks. So right before they sort of like disappear, Esteban, you kneel down and start investigating um, more closely. Uh, and you are able to, with a 12, uh, discern that these are not man-made tracks. It's not snowshoes. It must belong to some kind of creature. Big pie. Okay, officially a monster. Officially not a person. Um, and then, so I, could, so I can tell it's a monster, but they're, they're starting to fade now. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, we're starting to lose the trail. If anybody has any ideas from here. Do they look, does the end of the trail look like it's heading towards the mountains or off deeper into the woods? Towards the mountains. Towards the mountains. Well, uh, I guess the mountains are our only landmark. We can make our way over there. Maybe it has some sort of lair or cave that it likes to live in. Yeah. Does it look like like branches and shrubs were kind of like broken off out of the way as this creature is like moving? Uh, with the 12, you are able to see, yeah, some, you've, uh, you've actually been clocking this as you've been hiking. Some of the branches that you've been following uh, have been broken and um, where the footfalls are are heavier, um, and you can tell based on how deep they are into the snow, uh, it looks like whatever this creature was, was um, running. Hmm. It was getting out fast, it was running. And uh, and that's that's kind of, uh, Sheriff Nash has been um, helping you point those th- sort of things out as well. He's That's how he's been helping you keep on the trail. Is there any safer caves around, like before we start getting deep into the system with the scary ones? No, towards the surface uh, is as safe as you're going to get. I mean, the deeper you go, the more treacherous it becomes. The Toapahula cave system goes throughout the length of this whole mountain range. Are there any urban legends about the cave system? Oh, plenty. I mean, before Sharpwood as a town even existed back in the 1800s, I mean, you'd hear tales of uh, Yeti, Wendigo, um, you know, Native American myths of legend and... 
and all sorts of things. Um, well, I say the be our best bet is to get to the entrance of this cave system and see if we can learn anything from there. Maybe evidence to show that the creature may have gone deeper into it. Well, the cave system is massive. I could take you to one of any 100 entrances around here. Where's the nearest one? He points, and you see a big hole in the side of the mountain right next to you guys. Perfect. So that's probably our most logical choice. It's literally right next to us? It's like 10 feet away, yeah. We've been standing here talking this whole time. You guys have been hiking and talking. Ah. Okay. Can we just, like, take the big flashlight and peer inside? Yes, you can. You see uh, Click. smooth blue ice walls um, all lying all around, and the, the light beam shines and reflects beautifully and glitterily all across all of the crystalline blue ice. Any, uh, like, wet footprints or anything like that? Nope, you don't see nothing like that. Mm. Well, that was my idea. Holly, shine your light down in there. See how deep this uh, particular cape goes before it starts to dog leg. Click. Click, click, click. You're shining your flashlight into the cave. How deep does it go? Deep as fuck. It's a big cave. Okay. <laughs> deep as fuck. That's your answer. Mm. <laughs> if I was a big scary monster that just uh, killed a police officer, I think that um, this spot would look pretty nice to me. Yeah, but those are urban legends, as I just told you. Didn't you say you ran with sword? How often were those urban legends true? You know what? Most of the time, urban, urban legends turn out to be just that. It's the one in ten times that they're not is the reason I called you. But That's a pretty high statistic. Ten percent? And that's the reason you're here. So if you, as your FBI purview and your jurisdiction, thinks that you guys want to go in that cave, then that's all fine and good. We'll wait for you right here. Well, you wait out here, and if you hear screaming and crunching, then it's probably a bad sign. Yeah. Well, uh, Deputy Hart and I will... We'll split up and we'll try to go to a couple of the other cave entrances around here. Maybe if there is a monster in there, you can spook it out and we'll we'll be waiting. But I, I think the best bet for your survival is if you didn't split up. You let me worry about my department. You worry about yours. Do you guys have flares, flare guns or something? Let us know if you're in trouble. Yes, of course. He points to his utility belt. He's like fully kitted out. You okay. saw them both fully load up. I turn to Deacon. Do you think it'll be... The sheriff, the deputy, or both? Uh, hopefully not. Hopefully uh, we're heading right to the heart of it. Let's go about 200 yards in. If we don't find anything, we'll turn back. Sure. Sheriff Nash marches up to the west, and Deputy Hart goes off to the east to the two other cavern entrances around here. You guys delve deep into the cave. The uh, light starts to fade the deeper you go. Um, and I'm going to need everyone to roll to act under pressure as the terrain becomes treacherous and slippery with ice. Oh, I should have done it. Six. Seven. Twelve. What? <laughs> Two sixes, baby. You guys uh, get down about 200 yards uh, down into this cave, um, and uh, suddenly you feel the ground beneath your feet, Holly, give way as you just take a step onto a patch of ice that just comes loose from the ground and you slide slide past and you actually, you were walking behind Esteban, you actually take him out with you. Uh, Esteban, you fall flat on your back, but you're able to like pull out your knife and stick it into the ice and catch yourself as Holly just slides right past you and you watch Deacon as she skids past you. I'd like to try to catch her with telekinesis. Roll, act weird. Act weird. Roll to act weird. Uh, that's going to be a 10. So I get to choose two. I'll choose to take one less harm from my telekinesis, and I'll grab her and stop her from so, sliding. Holly, you are sliding down this ice ramp, and right before you plunge off into the depths of darkness, you close your eyes, and you pray to the secret masters, and you feel your, your, your momentum is arrested, and you open your eyes, and you look around, and you're floating in midair. Where's my flashlight? Uh, you dropped it. You watch as it skittle. You watch as it skitters off and plummets into the darkness. However, because you're floating here in midair, you see right before it smashes into a million pieces, it hits the ground. Maybe like another two hundred yards below you. Um, actually, probably about a hundred yards. Uh, Esteban, with with one knife hand in the ice, looks at Holly and is like, 
That was my good flashlight. I'm sorry. I'll get you a new one for Christmas. So you were you were able to see before the flashlight uh, destroyed. You did see it hit the ground. So you know you if you want to travel further, you guys have another hundred yards to go. This is going to be down a straight ice uh, ice wall in the depths of this cave. Like a and slope. Now, like, like a, a slide? like you were walking down a slope, almost like a slide. Yeah. Um, and the train was, was rocky towards the, the cavern, which was helping you keep purchase, but the deeper you got it's into the ice. cave, it just becomes slick ice. Like an ice slide? Like an ice slide, and that's what happened to you. And now you're in midair as Deacon is still holding you. Uh, Deacon, you're beginning to lose your grasp as you've been holding I it. I want to reel her in. Yeah. Uh, you, you bring her in and you put her down and you, you get purchase, uh, with your feet and grab onto like a, uh, stalag tight that's coming out of the ground. Might. Might. Slide mic coming out of the ground, yep. um, and uh, you you get to your feet, Esteban, and you are all kind of there in uh, almost pitch blackness now as the sunlight uh, is barely reaching you. So it goes down a hundred more yards or feet. A hundred more yards. Yards. Why are we using yards? Because Deacon loves football. Come on, bro. <laughs> Deacon does love football. Okay, well it goes down a hundred more yards, and it's just like a slippery slide down. And I broke the flashlight. Noticed that last part for sure. Uh, nobody, you got nobody suffered any harm or anything. You guys just cool. Thanks. Fucked up. Okay, um, Deacon, how strong is your telekinesis? Before we decide, we want to drop ourselves into a hole. There's no guarantee we'll be able to get back up out of. How do you suppose a monster that large would be able to survive a hundred yard fall without taking any sort of physical harm? Probably just climb down. Maybe it's a yeti. Before we do that, you know. Maybe check for like handholds or something on the side. If there was a yeti or something or a monster, maybe they have a way to climb up and down. I check for ways to climb up and down. Okay, roll investigator mystery. Can I roll to help out? Sure. Oh yes. I don't need it. Peep him, Holly. That's another double sixes. <laughs> wow, you guys. I'm not smart, so that's an eleven. So you get a plus one. Thirteen. Uh, you look so good with this flashlight. You take the best look you've ever looked, and it is just like smooth ice all the way down. That's the best I've ever looked in my life. I don't think this is where we need to be. Okay. How do we get out then? Back the way we came. Can, can we climb back up? Is it too slippery? It is really slippery, but you guys have not uh, gone past the point of no return yet. So. Okay. Guess make our way back out. I but mean... Listen. You follow me. I went down the path where I didn't slip and fall and almost die, so I'm gonna retrace my steps. Yeah, but okay, this is a big scary cave. Where a big scary monster probably lives. Except we've seen no signs of this big scary monster in this big scary cave at all. Except this big scary cave just so happened to be right exactly next to where we were walking, right up upon the tra uh, tracks. They said there was a lot of big scary caves. <sighs> Check the next cave. I think we um, go check on our officer friends. This is a bad cave. Okay. You guys begin the hike back up the ice ramp that you came down into this cave. Pick up our glow sticks. Um, since, you, since you arrived and with all the hiking and everything you've been doing, it's probably getting close to noon now. Uh, and you are beginning to hear the, the daylight um, becomes brighter the closer you get to the entrance, but you are beginning to hear uh, sounds of the wind is picking up. You hear a me first. <laughs> cool. And I'll make my way outside the cave. You take a step out uh, outside the cave, Esteban. You are hit with a gust uh, of wind as it seems like a sudden snowstorm might be picking up. It's not, the visibility is still good. It, you're not getting like pelted with snow. It's not like a blizzard or anything yet, but, um, and you're not necessarily like a, a winter wilderness expert either, but you feel like you know, you, you can kind of sense when a storm is coming. Storm's coming. Feel it in my joints. <laughs> you two are going to need to keep warm. Um, so, look away for a second. I have another idea. Oh, no. Don't give me your skin. I'm not going to give you my... As enjoyable as that would be to watch you wear my old skin, please look away for a second. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. Oh, no. I don't know. I don't want to know what he's doing. It's taking longer than usual. <laughs> Is that the wind or his body? I want to peek so bad. He said not to look. Merry Christmas. 
Holly and Esteban. Why? <laughs> you make it huddle next to me for warmth. What the hell? We already have one Santa. I'm better. <laughs> Why? Because it's Christmas. <laughs> okay, but how does that help us keep warm? I'm fat now. <laughs> yeah, I guess. You watch as Deacon swells to three times his normal size. It looks like he has a bowl full of jelly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, bro. Okay, sure. Is Scooch really close to him? Is he warm? Uh, his body, his core body temperature is still that of an alien, still running at like five degrees Celsius or whatever. You're cold. I tried. <laughs> okay. I'm talking my normal voice. No one else is around. <laughs> okay. Um, oh my god. I guess just pick east or west. Oh, you do you want to follow your gut, Esteban? I think I can only do that once per day. Never mind. What does your other gut say? Your gut that doesn't have magic powers? Um, it says go the way the deputy went. To the deputy. To the way he went. East. East. East it is. Alright, so you guys start trekking east. Um, now Deacon is very fat and uh, looks like Santa Claus. But still cold. Still, still cold. Uh, you guys begin your begin hiking east. Uh, it is easy enough to follow um, the deputy's tracks that he left in the snow uh, to one of the other cave entrances up there. Um, and uh, you you see him uh, at the top of a hill. Um, it looks like he's like banging on the ice wall or something. Uh, and he turns around to you guys and he sees the two of you and Deacon he says, Oh, Sheriff Nash, I didn't realize you were coming back. What happened to that other fellow? Uh, he went down into the ice caves to see if there was anything to be found. He seemed like a pretty athletic sort. Oh, well, it looks like there was some kind of, uh, ice slide or something. This entrance been covered up. I've been trying to break my way through. You see he's got an ice pick that he's chipping away at the, at the ice wall with. Uh, I walk up and I say, can you, uh, give me a try on there? And I pull out. It's, it's, ma it's magic. He turns around and, and goes, oh shit. He tucks his uh, thing back into his boot and takes a step back from the wall. Um, I would like to hit it magically. Uh, nine. Uh, so on a mixed success, Esteban, uh, you start, you do your wind up with your wrench and you whack it really hard. Crack! And you watch as the as cracks in the ice begin to cover the, the entire wall, but it was not enough to break through. Not magic enough. Deacon, uh, Sheriff can uh, use Deacon, it. Deacon, <laughs> Deacon stayed behind. Can you think really hard about the warmth of Christmas? Everybody look at deer. <laughs> I turn the deputy <laughs> and I go, wait, that could be the monster. He pulls out his gun. I use telekinesis on the, the, roll, roll plus the two. shattered <laughs> ice wall. The warmth of Christmas. Uh, that's a 10. So I choose two, I'll take one less harm, and I'll set it, I'll use fire to try to melt it and weaken it. He, he had, Esteban had already weakened it significantly, so it's easy enough for you to just finish it off. <laughs> it all comes crashing down. He, he, uh, Deputy Hart is, has his revolver out, and he turns around to you guys and says, I don't see anything. Uh, Esteban just pretends to be looking really hard. <laughs> Oh, must be the storm kicking up. I don't see nothing either. <laughs> yeah, the wind is starting to uh, mm. to push up, he's, and he's covering his eyes. Actually, he says, "Damn, well, you guys got to find your friend. We gotta. We can't spend too much time. If we get caught out in these hills, we don't make it back. We'll we'll be screwed." You're right. Uh, you take shelter. Um, I think something happened with the sh with the ice wall. It's open now. Oh um, wow! Would you look at that? My crack <laughs> probably just finally gave way. You go and take shelter. Um, I'm gonna radio my assistant to come and help. You be in there alone for like two seconds. <laughs> okay, sure. I'll go with him. Yeah, you go with him. I'll just go with to him just sure. to make sure. I think I hear. Him. Okay, yeah, that's him. <laughs> <laughs> and I go like behind a tree, and then I just wait for the deputy to go inside, away from everybody else. He does. Do you now? Now what? Be don't be Santa Claus. Oh. <laughs> it's not helping. He thinks you're the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> He's so sad. <laughs> the magic of Christmas is gone. Deacon yeah. sadly melts away. <laughs> All sad melting. Yeah, like my hair. <laughs> I'm in the cave. I come in like a minute later. I'm like, oh, I, I found him. Here he is. Well, where'd the sheriff go? 
Um, he went to... The bathroom? Did you see him? Did you see where he went? <laughs> yeah. We passed him on the way over. No, I didn't see him. <laughs> okay, weird. I don't know. He said did he maybe run to the bathroom or something behind oh, a tree? Oh, he did say I had to take a leak, yeah. Okay. So he said, he said he'll keep, he'll pick up. Well, okay. Well, if you guys want to keep investigating, I'm going to go find the sheriff. Like I said, if we get caught out here in this storm, we, we don't want to be caught unaware, so... I'll, we'll try to meet back here, okay? Yeah, you shouldn't be hard to find. Big Did Red you Sea. find anything in the other cave? No, that was a dead end cave. Okay, I figured this this one is one of the uh, major entrances, but it seems whatever that there, the last storm that came through must have covered it in ice. I was trying to break it through, but it looks like you know whatever happened, it's clear now. So just be careful. We're on it. Um, Holly, you can write that down. Crazy magic ice all of a sudden going on there. Can I investigate the ice? <laughs> it's all shattered everywhere on the ground. Crazy magic ice. Scary. Why does it have to be magic? Because it just came out of nowhere real fast. The dude was like, oh, look, this ice just appeared. Is there any uh, signs of, like, an avalanche, like, around, or did it just... Uh, you don't really know what signs of an avalanche would look like, but... Um, yeah, I grew it, up in Nevada. Yeah, it, <laughs> it, it, appears, uh, it appears like ice. Like, you know, you have no idea how, how it could have formed. Okay, let's go inside. But the wind is starting to pick up again. It's cold as shit out here. Yeah, it's cold. Uh, uh, sh uh, Deputy Hart marches off um, back uh, west or wherever direction I said earlier towards the sheriff. Little baby flashlight. Little baby flashlight. Everyone roll, act under pressure again as you march into this ice cave. Oh, god damn it. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> <laughs> I rolled really bad. Four. Sweet. Eight. Cool. <laughs> Six. <laughs> okay, so you guys start marching down um, about uh, 50 or so yards into this cave, um, and you make it to an ice shelf, and you look below, and you see uh, only about 50 feet or so below you, there's another ice shelf that uh, has a, a carved entrance that leads further in, uh, and you guys all make it to the edge. And as you're um, looking over, you turn to talk to each other to discuss the best way to go forward. But before any of you can even speak, you all hear at the same time. <laughs> as the entire ice shelf that you are standing on gives way, Esteban, you pull the same move you did before. <laughs> you take your knife out. I heard the cracking and I just immediately reached for my knife and slowly just took my arm yeah, out. You, you take your knife and this time with your wrench as well, you kind of double step in and, and uh, like Spider-Man when he's holding the, <laughs> the train. The train. You you stop yourself, but uh, you have to watch in horror as both Deacon and Holly plummet and you both go 50 feet down, taken away in the avalanche with this. You are slammed at the bottom of this cavern. You both take another one harm. I was going to say, I, I guess I don't have time to turn back into Santa and hope my body absorbs the blow. Uh, even if you were to turn into Santa, That's the wild. thousand pounds of ice and snow that just landed on top of you. Roger, Roger. <laughs> Santa is a man too, okay? Manta. Uh, so you take another one harm, Holly, and you take your first harm of the day. I uh, miss Deacon. the desert. <laughs> and uh, Esteban, you are dangling feet, uh, dangling in the air as you see your companions just... And you you can't even tell if they're alive from, from where you are. You just saw them get crushed under a thousand pounds of snow. If you're alive, moan. I T-1000, stick my thumb out of the ice with a thumbs up, and I go... Ow. <laughs> uh, can you do me a favor? You see, Holly just sticks her boot up out of the ice. <laughs> She's upside down. I'm upside down? down? <laughs> yeah. Sick. Or can, 800. Can you get me? What do you, yeah, but you gotta pull your stuff out of the ice. I can't get all of it. I'll, I'll pull it out, and once I start falling, I need you to grab me. Okay, I wanna get a, brush all the snow and ice off of me. I'm gonna wanna... try and dig out of the hole. You guys can hear, too, from... Uh, you guys aren't very deep into the cave yet. You can hear the... <laughs> The wind is picking up outside. It seems to be picking up at a constant rate. Every time you hear it, it's picking up more and more. Uh oh. Uh -oh. I'll uh, try to grab Esteban with my mind. Roll weird. Plus weird. This is bad. Uh, that's an 11. I'll take uh, no harm from my telekinesis and I'll take Esteban. So uh, you are crushed under the ice. Uh, the strain of that 
forces you to uh, not be as focused on your telekinetic powers, and you you feel the uh, the energy rack through your body as you are lowering your companion down. But you have a, you've summoned enough telekinetic energy to not only lower Esteban down to safety, but you also yank Holly out of the pile of snow um, and set her on her feet safely as well. You are all now looking up as there seems to be no way to traverse back uh, where you came from. Not surprised. I grab, uh, open one of my pouches, and I get the hand warmers, and I, I warm up two of them, and I scrunch them a bunch, and then I just slap them on Holly's face to warm up her face. Um, you guys hear from the uh, from the top some shouting. Uh, you hear the voice of Sheriff Nash shouting down. Is everyone all right down there? There, there. Yeah, we're alive. Alive, alive. alive. <laughs> we're just going to keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. He says, uh, Deputy Hart came and got me, said that you guys were uh, heading deeper into the cave system. I heard the crash. That's why I said not to go too deep. Had no choice. Choice, choice. <laughs> well, listen, uh, I'm going to go back to the station, get that snowmobile and some rope, see if we can't pull you out of here, okay? Just stay safe. Whatever happened, that killer's still on the loose. On it. Thank you very much. And then you hear the voice of uh, Deputy Hart um, come back and says, uh, We're going to try to get back before the storm gets too bad, but we, if we don't make it, y'all are going to have to camp out down there. 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 That's all right. I, I always carry provisions just in case, case, case. <laughs> okay. And watch out for the wind. It gets incrementally faster every time I hear it. Yeah, we know. <laughs> no. uh, so they, they march away, and you guys are left at the bottom of this cave. Uh, you do see a path seems to continue before you. Um, whatever ancient underground, you know, ice water flow that left, that formed this cavern uh, has long since turned to ice now, but it, it made some very beautiful, beautiful carvings and, and cavern systems in this ice that you could appreciate if you weren't fearful for your life. Um, and it is very dim down here. The, the sunlight is kind of peeking through, but if you're going to traverse further into this cave, you're going to need another light source. We have a tiny flashlight. I take out my oily rags that I always have on me. Okay, well I can light this. We have the sterno too, if that's um... If that runs out. I got that. So is there a way we can carry it? You can't just hold it in your hand. You have a magic ranch. <laughs> Esteban has a magic bottle of ranch. <laughs> I wrap a bunch of oily rags around the, the wrench and then I light it. Yeah, you pull a Zippo, old old school flip Zippo lighter out of your uh, many pockets and you have created a, a torch out of your wrench. Um, and it burns with a magically hot intensity. I put it really close to Deacon. Uh, you see part of his skin cells start to melt away and expose the underneath uh, gray flesh. Sorry, <laughs> just wanted I, to see how that worked. Are you weak to magic? I don't think so. <laughs> put it back. <laughs> Every time you put it close to him, more of his face melts away. Shall we? Gross. Gentlemen? Yeah. Deacon does a quick <laughs> like in a cartoon and has his face back to normal. I give Holly the little flashlight I have, and then I, I'll take the, the torch and I'll, and I'll walk forward. I'll take a can of stir and I'll light it. And with my telekinesis, um, I don't have to roll for this. I can move something smaller than a person. I don't have much control, and I can't move it strongly enough to hurt anything, but I feel like I can make it levitate as like a little light out in front of us. Sure. Potentially. You, if you would like to do that, yeah. Can I have some tape? I take out like three different size tapes. Just like... regular tape, thank you. Okay. I'll take the little flashlight and tape it on top of my magnum like a cool detective. It goes on the bottom. Whatever. The light goes on the bottom. Okay. If you put it on the top, the sights are obscured. It's harder to aim that way. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I, do, I do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I only have one gun. It's okay. I don't have a ton of guns that I know all about. I have just one. I mean, maybe if you put the flashlight, it'll help you aim better. You seem to be missing a lot lately. That's a really good point. It's true. It's true. It'll help. Okay. I do that, and then I'm like... I look all cool. You actually notice that the bottom of your pistol actually has a rack that is for tactical flashlights already uh, there that you just haven't been using. Kidding me? That's what it's for. I stick it in there. <laughs> you tape it anyway just to make it extra secure. Um, and you guys start marching deeper into the cave. Uh, it The temperature plummets as soon as you get out of the sunlight. Um, 
Esteban and Holly, you you guys are both starting to shiver, and you kind of hold the the torchlight a little bit a little bit selfishly closer to you. Um, Holly, you are you are shivering, and Deacon, you're like walking in the park. You're this is like this is like you know, the, the you you've never been to your home planet, but this is the environment that you were built for. I uh, I see Holly shivering, and uh, rather than hold the light out in front of me, I'll hold it so she can warm her hands on it. Keep her little. It's like a little uh, globule of light, just a little perfect little campfire, just right in front of you. Thank you. You guys start um, marching down, uh, and then you start to hear uh, as you you guys march probably another twenty minutes deeper into this cave, um, and it you you feel. Uh, it's hard to tell, keep your sense of direction down here, but you are traveling in just one way, which helps. And you don't feel, you feel like you're going down maybe at a slight uh, decline, but you don't feel like you're you're going terribly, terribly deep. It's it's more of like a steady path that just kind of goes mostly straight forward. Uh, and eventually it comes to a larger chamber um, and you hold the your various torches and flashlights out. You can see stalactites and stalagmites and ice and... Um, has car has been carved out into this huge chamber, probably about uh, sixty feet all around, um, and it looks like this is this is where uh, this path ends. Um, and as you get to the end of this path, at the entrance to this chamber, you hear a low, low rumbling sound. I start taking out my glow sticks and throwing them all around the room. I know you all heard that. As as I'm throwing the glow sticks, I know you all heard that. I'm gonna get ready. In case this is another avalanche, I wanna brace myself against like the back of the wall that's not directly in front of the place we walked in. So if there is sh stuff shooting down this slide we just walked down, then it doesn't hit me. That's a really good idea. So when Esteban and Holly, or uh, Deacon and Holly, you guys press your backs up against the wall. Esteban, you start throwing the ghost glow sticks around, and I need you to roll to read a bad situation. Whatever's about to try to jump and eat my face, I wanna be at least to see it. You so a ten is successful. Um, so you uh, throw these glow sticks all around, and you they bounce off the walls, bounce off one of the stalactites, hit the ground, and the last one as you throw it, it lands and then skids across the ice, and then just illuminates a hulking mass of white fur. I knew it. And you see, it seems like its chest is falling and rising, and that low grumbling sound you hear appears to be snoring. And you just missed throwing the glow stick directly at this thing, and it seems to still be asleep. Shoot it. Can no, I no, no, use no. some of my... Um, are there any other dangers I haven't noticed? Uh, you look around, you see um, the ever-present danger of cave-in and avalanche and ice slide is, is always around. So if you guys are going to be uh, fighting whatever this creature is and uh, firing your weapons or slamming into the walls or anything like that, there's a potential that you could suffer another cave-in. Okay. Um, so yeah, I point to the guns. I look at Holly and I go like this, bad. And I take out the wrench. With the fire on it? Can I can I investigate a mystery? To do what? I wanna ask what what can hurt the monster the best. I could ask my friends. That's true. I want okay. Group I group huddle. I tiptoe back. <laughs> so you guys notice this hulking mass of white fur. You haven't even seen what it is really. You just see a, a black or uh, outline. A shadowy outline uh, of whatever this creature is. Could just be a polar bear. It could just be a polar bear, but... Louder. Remember. remember. Okay, it could just be a polar bear. I forgot, I'm, sp I'm whispering loudly. It could just be a polar bear, but... You remember back at the station, there was no signs of forced entry, no signs of a struggle. I'm not so sure that this thing killed the deputy. We, we just happened to stumble upon a random Yeti slash polar bear. What if the Yeti got scared? What if this thing was watching whatever went down in the police station? You think it's a friendly Yeti? I don't know. I've never met a Yeti before, <laughs> so... If... Have I ever met a Yeti before? Roll... Just roll plus weird to see if in, in ever, if in Esteban's monster hunting career he's ever come across a Yeti. 
Nine for Yeti. Um, on a mixed success, you have not come across a Yeti, but you have come across uh, your fellow agents who, you know, you guys chat around the water water cooler and whatnot. And you remember like a, a year or two ago, um, uh, there was an Arctic uh, a mission that some agents came back from and, and told you about, and there were some Yetis. Um, and you don't know whether they're friendly or not, but you do know that they are, as far as this monster goes, Yetis are usually more intelligent. So you can take that to mean what that means. They're usually more intelligent than just regular monsters. But they could use that intelligence for eating. evil. Yeah. Eating our faces. I have or they idea. could use it for being nice. So you have no idea. Libby has an idea. I mean, Holly has an idea. Holly has an idea. <laughs> Go ahead. Perhaps we sneak back out a little bit. I set up shop and I just talk to some friends. Just real quick. Okay. See what they think. Yeah. That's the if, whole thing. Ask if the Yeti is tight and we can. Is he tight or is he like <laughs> is gonna he hurt like, us? Or yeah. is he like our friend? Or does he have a friend that's gonna hurt us? Or like is there a person that has him as a friend that's trying to get him to hurt us? Yeah, just ask what the deal Et cetera. is. Etc. What's the deal? I yeah. think that's a good idea. You two go ahead. Don't he, stand here by yourself with a Yeti. If he wakes up, someone has to run interference if he hears you guys trying to get out. I can move quick. Well, I was going to be the interference. I don't want, I don't think we should hurt this thing. I'm following my gut right now, and my gut's telling me that this Yeti did not murder the deputy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All the evidence does not, all the evidence points not to this guy. Okay. We're whispering this. All right, me and, me and Holly will make our way back out that place, and we will, we will ask the secret masters. Okay, uh, Holly, I'm gonna need you to roll Act Under Pressure, and the, or Espon, you can roll to help out, um, you know, because contacting the secret masters is often a... Uh, a an ordeal? An oval, yeah, it's a whole ordeal. There's lots of candles and things you gotta put out, and um, you need to try to do this quietly. That's an 11 to help out, baby. Plus one. Roll plus... Oh, what am I helping? You're, act, you're acting under pressure? Eight, nine. So, um, on a mix success, uh, you get the last candle in place. Um, and as you, like, you do one final, like, wave over to, like, prepare yourself for the ritual, uh, and you knock one of the candles over, and it burns your hand a little bit, and you go, ah, shit! And then you cover your mouth. Um, and... Uh, Deacon, why don't you roll Act Under Pressure? I helped you so good. Five. That many. I'm gonna market experience. Okay, so, um, you, you just burn your hand a little bit and just catch yourself going, ah, ah. Uh, you make just a little bit of noise, um, and Deacon, you hear this and you turn and you see the Yeti starts to stir, and you had a moment that you might be able to run interference, uh, but as you take a step forward, you just full on trip and fall flat on your face and make an even louder noise and poof, crack, uh, you just fall straight down and you guys back towards, uh, towards the entrance of this cave here up the echoes and then the, the low grumbling sound stops. I'm not here to hurt you. He's a big meat monster. You see now in the light of the glow sticks, the... Nine foot tall Eddie Yeti. <laughs> Eddie the Yeti. Eddie the Yeti um, starts to come up to its feet. <sighs> I want to roll to manipulate someone if I can. With it's words. a fucking monster. Uh, it turns to you and sees you standing there. And my hands are up, and I'm like, "Hold on." Scary. Breathe a huge cloud of ice from deep within its chest, and you guys look over and watch as Deacon is just showered, showered in ice. Um, and you see a little Deacon popsicle as he is just frozen, completely solid in its place. And the Yeti begins to march towards him. Uh, you guys are about 15 feet away with your candles and everything all set up. I didn't get hurt I, from that, right? You are frozen solid. Oh, okay, I take I one of the candles and I pull out a, another bottle of alcohol from the back, and I'm gonna throw them both at Deacon to just fucking light them up with fire. 
No, this works! And I just throw a fucking alcoholic candle at it. Okay. Uh, roll to act under pressure. I have a question. Can I kick ass instead? You're not kicking Deacon's ass because you don't want to hurt him. Oh no. <laughs> so you reach down to pick up one of the candles, uh, Esteban, but instead, for the audience, this is a double snake eyes. This is a failure. <laughs> um, you reach down and uh, go to pick up one of the candles, and without, because you're keeping your eyes trained on Deacon, so you just reach your hand down off frame, and you pull up, and you realize way too late that you're lifting up the can of uh, butane or whatever, the sterno, the, sterno, the, the permanently uh, on fire, glowing red hot can, and it sears into your hand for one harm and you drop it and a fire starts uh, at your feet as you and Holly are here at the entrance of the cave and you're screaming ah fuck Ashton's freaking out Holly you, you jump back out of the way and now there now it is absolute chaos as this yeti is running towards you it, it runs right past Deacon as he's frozen in ice and is running right towards you guys now fire all around your feet this actually uh, works for me. And I try to get behind the fire so the Yeti has to, like, come through the fire. It runs right through the fire, does not seem to hurt it, and it gets right up next to you and... I never With know. two two hands, puts them right... Two big, meaty Yeti hands, puts them right in your chest and slams you up against the, uh, the cave wall and pins you in place. And it looks like it's about to do another ice breath. I take out my pistol and I put it under his chin. <laughs> <laughs> Roll a kick ass. <laughs> We're, we're not in that big room, we're in like the hallway now. You're in like the entrance to the big room. Yeah. Uh, 12. Blast, the gunshot. <laughs> Echoes throughout the entire cavern. You feel the, the walls rumble um, and you feel like you should not maybe cause too much more disturbance in the force, otherwise you might suffer another cave-in. But you do terribly inflict harm on this yeti who drops you and you drop down to your feet and reels back. Am I conscious? You're conscious, yeah. I want to morph back into Santa and see if my corpulent form breaks out of the ice. Why would that be? Okay, go ahead, uh, but it'll be Holly's turn next. So, okay. you, so, uh, Esteban is slammed up against the wall, shoots the yeti in the head. <laughs> Gunshot echoes out, rumblings from the cave. Uh, you drop down to your feet. The Yeti reels back in pain. I get in between the Yeti and Holly. Figure it out, kid. I want to try and talk to it in the soothing, calming voice that I talk to the Secret Masters in. And I would say, hello, Mr. Yeti. Please, we do not want to hurt you. Roll to manipulate somebody. Nine plus three, twelve. Holly, you you had like your tuning fork that you took out to uh, to t contact the secret masters, and you just ping. And on echoing uh, off of that gunshot that just rang out, you hear a a, a low, ping. like soothing, um, high frequency pitch that just resonates out, and the acoustics in this cavern perfectly reverberated around. Um, so it's all encompassing, and you kind of bring yourself into a pseudo trance like state and just go all. Yeti, you are our friend. Then try to calm it down. Uh, you see, it, it takes a step back uh, from Esteban that it was about to like wail on you again. And, and Holly, uh, as you hit the tuning fork, it looks over to you and it looks around still really angry and confused, but it takes a step back from, from Esteban and is now like bearing down at you and its jaw kind of goes slack. <sighs> I want to keep talking to it. Um, okay, and Deacon, you... You are frozen completely solid. <laughs> <laughs> the ice shatters everywhere as you, as your skin and body, you morph your, your flesh to change into uh, your Santa Claus visage again, and that is enough to break yourself free. Uh, and you spin around and you see Esteban, um, uh, his flames all around uh, his feet. Uh, he's shaking his hand in pain, and a huge Yeti is towering over him. Ho, oh, ho, hold on there, my furry friend. You're a long way from the North Pole. I can't believe it. <gasps> I don't want... It turns I don't... around and looks at you. Now just calm down, big fella. There's lots of you where I'm from. In fact, my good friend Yukon Cornelius made friends with one of you. <sighs> Yukon Cornelius. That's right. <sighs> <sighs> now let's... 
Oh, just calm down. You hurt, Yeti. Nope, 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 nope. It reaches nope. its claw up. You hurt me first. No. We need your help, Mr. Yeti. Yeti, don't remember it that way. You pushed me into the wall. I was just standing here. You attacked me first, Yeti, buddy. please. You come to kill, Yeti. No. Yeti, we need your help. We understand Yetis are so smart. and We need help investigating a murder. Someone was killed in town. Do you know who it was? No! Yes. Yeti, no what help? What do you want, Yeti? Yeti, won't you leave? Rah! He starts blowing ice Shit. at you guys. It doesn't freeze any of you solid, but it forces you to take a few steps back. Yeti, will leave. And he takes a few steps back into his cave. Can you tell us if you saw anything, Yeti? We'll leave if you help us. I know that, you know, the experience we've had just now is not really inspiring a lot of faith, but anything that my friend did here was out of self-defense. You understand, you're big, you're strong, we're small, we're weak. Yeti, no one revenge. Yeti, want sleep in peace. Well, how about this? Can I show you something and you have to promise not to smash me? Yet you make no promise. You and I are a lot alike, okay? In more ways than you know. So just hold on for a second and hear, hear us out, please. Yet he uh, leans off screen and pulls up like an old foldable lawn chair. <laughs> he puts it down and he fits up like a thermos like from Huey Halloween. <laughs> and does it and you see uh, some steam coming from the thermos and he sits down and says, Okay, yet he gave you one chance. Yeti, you and I are a lot alike. I'm a creature, you know, much as yourself, that is not a human. But not all humans are bad, okay? These two have defended me from bad men, bad monsters, my entire time that I've spent with them. And I want to help you as a fellow monster, as a fellow creature that's outside of humanity. Let us help you and maybe you help us. May I roll to manipulate? Yes, and you can take plus one on this. That's gonna be a six plus three, 10. He unscrews, he screws the lid back on and he gets up and he walks over and taps you on the top of your head again. He's nine feet tall, hulking over all of you. It's real, I promise. You know pink. I'm not pink, I'm gray. You are like Yeti. We are monster. Monster! <laughs> he, he picks Deacon up and you guys watch as he swings Deacon around. You guys hear a few bones cracking. You're not even sure if Deacon has bones. You're not sure what that was. <laughs> um, squishes him around, flings him around. His, his arms go like limp at his side. I, I tap him. I go, uh, yes, Yeti, we are a group of people that help good monsters and hurt bad ones and hurt bad people. Mm. We would be willing to help you as we have helped our gray friend here. See, he look. helps us help monsters like we want to help you. Special. <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> food tastes gross. It's not food. <laughs> mm, gross food, pinks can eat gross. Me only eat caribou. You say you just want to sleep, right? Mm. We can make it so no other humans come and bother your sleep. Me put ice wall, you bother anyway. Yeah, well that was because we thought you were a bad monster that killed one of us. But now that we know you're a good monster, we'll fix that for you. Put up no sign, yet you no want no sign. People see sign, people read. Okay, no signs. We have special ways. No reading! <laughs> reading is bad. I honestly do agree with you. Reading sucks. What if? Pigskin tried to get too close. Me Pink, eat. Well, maybe not even you eat. Well, actually, yeah, maybe you eat. Me eat. <laughs> yeah, you, you eat, get rid of evidence. Me but, eat. We bring special friends that shoot people that bother you. Yes. So no one shoot you anymore. Yes. No shooting. No he rubs shooting. His, he rubs his jaw. Sorry about that. <laughs> so we'll bring special friends so no one can shoot you. They'll get shot first. Mm. Yet you like new friend. You are like Yeti family. And he leans down, and now all of you <laughs> all squeeze together, and he lifts you all fast. up. Oh, it hurts. 
Mm, yet you know, half friend. Ah, oh, he starts chewing on your head, Esteban. That's fine. <laughs> you, you see the drool is going all down his face. I've had way worse things bite my face. <laughs> this is fine. Mm, he licks your face, Holly, like a like a dog. Like one, it goes up. The drool gets up your nose a little bit, and he puts you all down on the ground. He says, "Ha, ah, Yeti, have friend." And he starts dancing around. Can we ask Yeti question now that we are Yeti friend? Yeah. <laughs> Did you see pink skin hurt other pink skin last night? Pink skin kill pink skin. Me no care. Did, did you saw this? Yeah, do you see everything, young mountain? Who, who hurt the other pink skin? What did pink skin look like? He pink skin. But uh, did he have a big beard like I did when I broke out of the ice? No fur. No fur. No fur. Just up like the deputy, the other guy. Can I show you one more trick? And it's still me, so when I do this, just know that it's your friend, Deacon. Me no like trick. It's, it's not, not, trick. not trick like trick like, you what know, bad that? thing, but... This is his big meaty claw. No. Trick like magic. You know how you're really tall and strong, your special Yeti powers? Me tall, strong. He turned into other things. Yes. But still alien inside. You do trick me hit if you no like. Okay. I'll protect you. Thank you. Okay. Me no like me hit. Did the bad pig... Me no like. Me hit. Don't hit hard. <laughs> me hit, then eat. Don't eat. I me eat. hit, then kill, then eat. Remember? Me no like. Me eat. Okay, it's not a trick, though. It's, it's magic. It's just... No, stop saying that. Okay. <laughs> it's not a trick. It's just demonstration. Me like demonstration. Okay. Now you stay over there. We stay over here. Eat. <laughs> Get sits there. down crisscross applesauce. Okay, good, good. Did the pink skin who shoot other pink skin look like this? And I want to morph into Deputy Hart. Yeah. Ooh, Deep morphs back. There's a lot of slime when he transformed. Slime. Did he, did pink skin look like this? <sighs> no, it's me. It's him, I no. promise. <laughs> like Yeti, I have special fur. See? Regular me underneath. Mmm. See? You know, pink. No, mm. gray. <laughs> but pink skin who hurt other pink skin. You. This face. You. There it is. There it is. You hurt pink skin. And I'll change back to, to actual deacon, not alien deacon. Yeti yeah, friends stay forever. Not, not. Come visit. He starts walking over to the entrance and <gasps> starts putting ice up. You know, leave. We need to leave. We come back. Yeti yeah, family. We'll come back. Family leaves sometimes. And we'll bring you caribou. And gifts. And gifts. Okay. Okay, Yeti yeah, help. He <laughs> picks you all up with one arm. <laughs> Uh, and you're all like sitting on his like bicep and all the way down his forearm. He just holds you out like this. And he walks you all back to the entrance that you came from and <laughs> puts one claw into the ice and just <laughs> <laughs> and with two huge bounds, he takes you all 50 feet up like supernaturally strong, just <laughs> pulls you guys all the way up to the top, <laughs> lands up there, puts you down, pats you all on the head. Me love you. We, we love, love you, you too. too. We too, yet, Eddie. What is your name? Eddie. Ah. Uh, Eddie the Yeti? I am Eddie the Yeti. That's a good name. It's nice to meet you, Eddie. I'm Holly. My Holly name. Jolly. Yes. My name's Esteban. Esteban. Go ahead. Man. Yep. Yes. <laughs> yep. Deacon. Deacon. Pee pants. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Wow, that's an apt one. You know, you're nine feet tall. I'm not going to argue with you. You can call me whatever you want, big guy. Me love. Be right back. We love also. We're going to go get our friends. Bye. Don't seal up all the way. We got to slip him through first. Wait, we're bringing them back here? We're going to leave them, on the, leave them in, the, in the front of the cave. Yeah. Okay. But we got, we're going to bring Wait, both of them. No, I'm in our homies. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna grab the other guy. 
The bad, you mean, yeah. the heart. Yeah, Sheriff What's-His-Face is probably dead by now, to be honest. Why would he be dead of? Why would he be dead? Because we're on his trail. Why would Hart want to kill anyone? We should probably figure that out, too. Maybe he's the skinwalker. I think he's jealous. To, of that what? he wasn't of Santa's best <gasps> elf. All three. Oh, my He said it was God. hollow. Mm. But this whole time. That's what he wanted? That's what he wanted. Thomas was just a rookie. But he got best elf three times in a row. Oh. And how long had Hart been there? Longer Way than longer. Thomas. Hey, and he said he might have a boyfriend. Maybe there's something, something going on. Let's get this bastard. I look for tracks. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie the Yeti jumps down through the hole. You hear <laughs> the whole cavern shakes, and you guys almost fall back down. Uh, you catch your footing. Uh, you hear him <laughs> stomp back off. Uh, you climb back up to the entrance. Um, and it's, uh, it's early, early after, afternoon now, uh, but the wind is stronger than it's been ever before. <sighs> you get to the entrance of the cave. Visibility is starting to be obscured by the heavy wind blowing all the snow around. Um, and you make it to the entrance of the cave. Should we get, head back to the station? If we can. They said they were coming back with a snowmobile. Yeah. Why don't we wait for them here? Can we look around and see if they're there? Can we trust Hart with anything now? Who's to say he didn't sabotage the snowmobile so they can't get back and just have us die in that cave? That's a good point. Were the FBI agents assigned to find him? Yeah, but You don't he... think he would just lock us in that cave and not come back to help? Okay, yeah. So that means that potentially the sheriff's in danger. Like I said ten minutes ago, yes. Okay, well then we better go. I can move faster than the two of you. I think I can handle one man. Okay. I'll make sure Holly doesn't fall into. But what if snow. he's not a man? He could still be a vampire. He could still be a vampire, but I think the likelihood of that is pretty much none now. Maybe he did the fake neck thing to make us think we're looking for vampires when it's just regular guy. But he didn't expect the sheriff to have sword experience. <gasps> hmm. Right. They don't talk about personal things in the station, remember? Yeah, they only talk about hunting and fishing. Exactly. Okay, yep. makes sense. You make your way over there. We'll be behind you. I'll use my preternatural speed uh, to go much faster than a normal person. When I chase, flee, or run, take plus one ongoing. So you take, uh, you, <laughs> you guys watch as uh, cartoonishly Deacon just sprints off, and an outline of him, like that, like all the snowfall that had been like all over your shoulders and stuff, is just left there momentarily, and then <laughs> collapses. Uh, you guys begin the long hike back to the station. Deacon, you're <laughs> hustling back. Um, you burst through the trees, and you do see uh, out back of the uh, sheriff station. You see the snowmobile. The hood has is been taken up, uh, and it is smoking a little bit from the inside. And you see uh, a Santa Claus suit-clad gentleman um, laying back, pressed up against the the wall of the sheriff's department, um, leaning on the the snowmobile, an ice pick. Lodged in his chest. Uh, uh, damn. It was hard, wasn't it? The bastard. Where is he? Uh, he points uh, in a different direction, further into the woods, the opposite direction um, that you guys went uh, towards the caves. He... Uh, he got me. I was trying... I was getting the snowmobile kitted up to come get you out, he said. He wasn't going to allow that. I said, what the hell are you talking about? Allow anything. And Arrgh. How much blood's on the ground? Uh, a decent amount. Um, he's stabbed in the, in the chest, but uh, his breathing is, is labored. All right, hold on. Uh, you worked with S.W.O.R.D. before, right? Yeah. You know the weird stuff happens? Yeah. This is probably going to hurt. Do your worst. And I'm going to pull the ice pick out and try to cauterize it with my telekinesis if I can use my flames. Okay, roll act under pressure first. And you can take plus one because you you got here uh, quick enough to have a good response time because you sprinted through the woods. That's an 11 for act under pressure. So you, you are able to remove uh, the ice pick without uh, damaging anything internally, or at least you hope. Deacon doesn't really know that much about uh, human physiology. But... Yeah. Now weird. Now roll plus weird. A seven. So I'll take one harm, but I'll cauterize the wound. Ah! You burn it. You burn a, a, a cauterize his wound. Ah! He places his hand on your shoulder and squeezes. Ah! Yep, yep. You, you take you, real... you take one harm actually not from your telekinesis but just oh, from, from him, him squeezing you so hard. Ah! 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 
<gasps> Why? Why would he do this? Because he wasn't Santa's best elf. He never deserved to be the best elf! And he won't be when we're done with him. He takes his shotgun and presses it to you and says, Get him! We can't let him get away with this! And I go, ho, 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 and now I have a shotgun. <laughs> and then I'll wait for my friends to get uh, here. Yeah, right at, at, around that time, you guys following in Deacon's footsteps. He, yes. made, he made a groove through the snow that made it easier for you guys. To Esteban bursts through the trees and goes, Did I just hear you make a one-liner? Yeah. Sweet, let's get him! <laughs> and, I, and I point in the direction that the sheriff... He, he's, he's getting up, uh, he's, and he's, he is rising to his feet, places a bloody hand on the wall and says, I need to. I don't know what he's capable of. I, I need to put out a warning to everyone in town to have him stay inside. Uh, if he... We're right... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. We're right by the stair- sheriff station. You're at the sheriff station right now. I want to help him inside, and then okay. we can do that. Yeah, you, you help him inside. He go, he's got one of those old, like, ham radios, like, from The Shining. Uh, he gets on and uh, he he makes puts a call out to uh, to the local uh, authorities, like the the other um, sheriffs who are out patrolling the town, or the deputies who are out patrolling the town, and uh, and you know anyone like the fire department and like the local hospital or whatever, like anybody important in town who needs to know. He's like putting the call out over over the radio that there is a uh, homicidal maniac at large, but he's only informing. Uh, those who who need to know, he wants to keep the general populace out of town. He he's saying, he goes, "Don't don't panic, anybody in town. Just tell them we got a big snowstorm coming, and everyone needs to stay inside, lock their doors and windows for the storm. Okay, we don't want anyone to act too rashly, but I'm hurt. Please, I need a I need a medic to the sheriff's department. Please." And he's he's going making his calls and everything like that, and he turns to you guys and says, "Go, go quickly, and go with God." I uh, take the shotgun that I had once we get outside, and I hand it to uh, Esteban. This is going to be a lot more use in your hands than mine. I do the cool thing where I click it, and I check the shells, and I close it, and I go, yeah. And uh, I look for any tracks. Uh, you see, the, the tracks are easy enough, just like the Yeti. The, the snow is deep, and you see the, the tracks are perfectly left there. Um, there's even a little bit of trail of blood, as you see, and as you follow the tracks, uh, there's a bloody ice pick um, left in the snow. I pick up the ice pick. That's what was in the sheriff's chest. How about uh, we return to sender? Sick. I wanted one too. Nice. <laughs> and uh, I pick up the ice pick and I, I run uh, following the tracks. Someone's going to get coal in their stocking. <laughs> <laughs> you guys high five and run, run through the woods. Um, the, the storm is, is picking up the wind. You guys are actually face, uh, going into the, uh, into the headwind. It's blowing you. Um, the, your, your skin is being, uh, burned almost by how, just how cold it is. You, you feel on your, your flesh as it, it's becoming red, uh, as the, the frosty air is just battering you, um, snow and, uh, you're pushing on, you make it deep into the woods. You follow, you follow these tracks hiking again a good distance, um, going as quick as you can, but the wind is slowing you down and it takes you another almost like an hour to make it back up deep into the opposite uh, peak of these Twin Peaks. And um, you come across a, uh, a old log cabin in the woods. Oh my God. Shock and awe. Shock and awe. And I want to use my telekinesis to see if I can set this cabin in place. I'm gonna oh fucking God. kick the door. <laughs> You're gonna uh, light this man's house on fire? Fuck him. What if he has a family? <laughs> As, and right before Deacon lights it up, I'm gonna try to kick open the door you, and level the shotgun. Let's try not to kill him. I'm just so curious why. <laughs> you kick open the door, uh, and you see uh, directly in front of you in the living room of this cabin that there's no furniture. It's very barren in here. Everything is everything that was in here has been all strewn and strewn about and thrown to the sides um, and directly in the center of the room there is a pentagram of blood and candles and you know oh and you know this to be uh, some kind of demonic ritual that you have uh, come across before um, and on his knees at the at the the uh, point of the of the pentagram star on the opposite side uh, his wrists 
Slit is uh, Deputy Hart. He looks up at you with his Santa's best elf hat on and says, <laughs> I should have been the best elf. Oh my God. I have done more for the people of this town than that ingrateful bastard Thomas ever did. And I will be recognized. I summon thee, demon of hatred and vengeance. Destroy them! And he thrusts his blood into the pentagram and you are all blown back. Deacon, as you are getting ready to use your telekinetic powers, the wind picks up even stronger and harder than before. You are blown backwards out of the out of the uh, cabin. Holly, you take cover behind a tree. Esteban, you're blown in against into the wall, uh, almost out the door, but you manage to just, just hang onto the wall as you're looking at uh, Deputy Hart stand up and his eyes glow uh, a demon, demonic red and his flesh begins to melt away in, this, in the way that Deacon's flesh, you've seen this before, except it is uh, being slowly replaced as wind swirls all around him and the snow kicks up and the windows are shattered and this ice storm is, is blowing all around you. The ice clings to his body and forms to his body until the lower half of him is a large circle of snow and the middle half of him is a smaller but also equally circular snow orb and his head becomes the smallest yet still spherical orb of snow and his his burning coal eyes become burning embers of dark coal as red flames streak up from them a long bulbous and and warted carroty nose and uh coal for his mouth into a frown appears oh no <laughs> and his two stick arms shoot out <laughs> From the side, uh, from the sides of the middle of his body, and he f turns to you all and says, "I will destroy it all." And he raises his arms up, and Esteban, you are flung through the window as the cabin is completely oh blown apart, oh. and uh, and wind and and a, a tornado of ice and wind and snow. Rage is all around. You guys can't even open your eyes or get to your feet as this demonic snowman is just kind of waddling through the snow towards look, the town. I look up to the sky. Towards the town. He's going towards the town. Oh, I look shit. up to the sky and I scream, Eddie! <laughs> you, you scream out into the snow, uh, hoping that your cries are heard, but it is just the three of you and the and the the dark gray clouds begin to blot out the sun even though it is still early afternoon it becomes almost darkness outside uh, as the snow and storm is battering you all you're you're all at the mercy of the elements right now and the snowman is heading towards town to wreak havoc and destruction I, I don't think we can shoot it we gotta get frosty guys <laughs> and I want to use telekinesis to maybe set him on fire go ahead oh, roll to uh, roll plus weird uh, six plus three is nine plus three. That's twelve. I'm gonna choose two effects. I'm gonna take less harm and I'm gonna set him ablaze. You shoot your flames as they just harmlessly streak over his back, and you watch actually as you in try to inflict harm on him that he swells a few inches inside in size as he. Okay, fire didn't do it. We gotta figure something else out. Guns won't do it if fire doesn't do it. What if we melt the snow in front of him so he can't collect more? Okay, how about Esteban, we can do that, but Esteban, go whack him with your magic wrench. <laughs> I run up and I try to whack him. Roll a kick ass. He's only, he's moving at a snail's pace because he's just <laughs> waddling through the snow, but the ice and the storm is, is raging all around him. That's 11 for a magic whack. Okay, as you bonk him, your, your wrench sinks deep into his snowy flesh and you pull it out, uh, but it is to no effect. And actually, as you injure him, he swells another two inches in size and oh he God. whips around his, his thin stick appendage, <laughs> whips around and smacks you in the face for two harm. But you're, uh, you're, you have a superficial scratch across your face, <laughs> but your armor uh, negates the harm that you would have suffered. Does, does he have a top hat on? He does not currently have a top. Oh hat. God! Damn it! Okay. Uh, okay. What he, he has the small, the best elf hat on. <gasps> I reach for the best elf hat and I try to rip it off his head. Okay. Roll plus weird. <laughs> That's gonna be uh, double nat one ease. You reach and you 
miss and you you the wind is is blowing all around you you can't even really get a beat on where he is and you you grab your you're just kind of close your eyes and on faith hope that you're reaching for the hat and you accidentally you hear a huge crack sound as deacon pulls a tree loose from the crown and it falls over uh s1 and holly roll act under pressure That, that kind of, you can keep that. Oh, good. Good. Twelve. Act under pressure. Ten. As you both dive out of the way and avoid suffering any harm as this tree <laughs> falls back against you. Deacon, you do take one harm from your telekinetic yeah, you power. You, you, ah, you, you feel your, your energy straining within you. You're almost out of breath. The, the storm is, is at its peak now all around you. Okay, Holly's going to take one for the team and she's going to just sprint as fast as she can and just try and rip, like grab the little circle and just rip it off if she possibly can. Okay, run up and roll the kick ass. I'm going to go get help. <laughs> Two. Uh, Holly, you jump up in the air to try to get it, but much like what happened to Esteban, he, he, his middle section just rotates around and now he's facing you, even though his, his bottom half is still moving forward, he just rotates around and just smacks you with his stick hand, ah! scratches you, and you take one harm. Can I protect uh, her from that attack? You're too far away, she ran up. Um, I'm just gonna try to shoot the hat off with my shotgun. Okay, pull the kick ass. Um, eight. Uh, on a mixed success, you throw the buckshot out at, at him. You see the, the bullets sink into his snowy flesh on his head, and one actually even pierces through the hat, but it does nothing, and actually as you harm him again, he uh, swells even more in size. He's now about like a 10-foot tall snowman, again, inching slowly down the down the side of this mountain towards the town. The storm is is messing with your guys' aim and your ability to, to be effective. I'm gonna try one Wind more time. All around. One more time to get the hat. With my telekinesis before I take off in uh, towards the cave where Eddie is resting. That's better. That's a ten. So a ten, I get two effects. I'm gonna grab the hat and I'm also gonna set it on fire. Okay. And I'll take a harm for that. You rip the hat off of his head and it burns into flames. And he looks up and you see his uh, his stick eyebrows go into it. <laughs> An angry motion as his head rotates 180 degrees around at you and says, No! I am the best elf! And he shoots coal out of his mouth. Esteban, help! Bullets at you. And you are you suffer one harm as you are pelted by snow. Oh my god! By, by rock hard frozen uh, sheets of uh, icy coal. You can't help me, huh? I. Can I? Yeah, if you'd like to protect him, you may. I oh, would, please, I'm almost there. I would like oh, to no. protect him so, from that. Yeah, you, you grab him and throw him down to the ground. Um, that will prevent you from being able to do anything else right now as you, you duck and uh, see this, this stream of bullet coal going towards him. You, you throw Deacon down into the ground and, and the bullets uh, just hit a tree behind you. We need Eddie. You go get, go him. get him. I turn to Holly and I go, we need down. to warn the town. Okay, so, he goes at a snail's pace. Yeah, so we're just going to run past him and go to town. I want to go he, back to he, the sheriff. He swipes at you guys as you run past him, but his little stick appendages are. I want to go back to the sheriff station to like radio. You guys, you guys are are running running back. The storm is is uh, picking up all around you. Is is battering you all with snow. Uh, visibility is very low. As you get twenty feet away from him, he just disappears into the snow. But you know that he's still out there. Uh, Deacon takes off into the other direction towards Eddie, the Eddie, uh, and you are lost in the snow. Um, oh God. Both of you guys roll, read a bad situation. Really bad. Seven? Uh, actually, seven also. Okay, so on a mixed success, you guys are unable to find a, a very quick path back to the sheriff's station. You're getting a little bit lost in, in the woods. Uh, the storm obscures the tracks from the direction that you came from. You're unable to, to find where you're supposed to go. Um, you're lost in the middle of the woods, in the middle of the snowstorm. Uh, Deacon, you <laughs> sprint, roll, read a bad situation. Do you need help? Do you want me to put them in your hand? <laughs> That's pretty good. You, you, you're, you're able. Uh, you, you turn yourself back into your gray skin alien form. You have your like thermal uh, eyeballs that are able to uh, to see through this uh, snowstorm. Um, and you sprint 
through the woods, making it back to the precipice of Eddie the Eddie's cave. Ooh, well, it's getting get a little tight. Must have been all those Christmas pies. <laughs> Uh, and you make it to the mouth of Eddie's cave. Eddie! You call, you call for him, and you hear, poof, poof, poof. His two huge meaty claws pull him over the precipice of the edge. Friend! Uh, poof, poof. He starts running towards you. Poof, 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 poof. He almost like tackles you to the ground. Poof, like a huge dog just puts his palms, his, his, uh, his palms on your chest and presses you flat on the ground, and you are being crushed under the weight of like a two thousand pound yeti. Eddie, Eddie, I'm gonna die. You have to get up. Ooh. Eddie, sorry. It's okay, Eddie. Eddie, I need your help. Eddie, family in danger. Big snow monster head towards Pigman Town. Hurt family. Look. Eddie, no care about snow. No, but he hurt. He hurt us. Look, and I show and I show him like all the the, the wear and tear that's on my body right now. He hurt family. We. We need Yeti help. He's too big for a small gray and pink man to hurt. We need a Yeti help. We need Eddie help. That's the, Eddie that's only one strong enough. Okay, roll to manipulate someone. Wow, this is beautiful. You can take plus This one. is beautiful. Nice. Doesn't count. Do you want me to put it in your hand? I have it. Okay. 11. Pretty good. Oh, 12 plus one. He, uh... He fills his chest with icy breath. Eddie, help! This way, Eddie. He's faster than you, almost in oh, the shit. snow. Yeah, he's he's oh, actually shit. having to slow down to like a jog as you are, as you are leading him back. But the the storm has picked up all around him. Uh, you guys make it back to the are eventually able to make it back to town, but uh, because you got lost in the woods, you don't make it back before the snowman does. You see him is uh, he's grown now. He's probably ten feet in height as. As he's shuffling down the main street, the pavement beneath him is being covered in ice, and he's leaving like an icy slime trail behind Ew. him. Oh no! The, the snow batters and, and slams into the buildings and windows all around. Um, are we near? Are we near the police station, or are we just in we're town? In You're near the police station. Um, I. Radio. Yeah, I run. I run to my car, okay. and um, I start to put uh, chains around the tires. <laughs> um, and I'm like, I have one plan, and I start just wrapping my tires and chains. Okay, yeah. Esteban goes and starts getting his, his car really ready for battle. You run in. Uh, Sheriff Nash is is still injured there. You see a paramedic has come from the local uh, from the local uh, hospital and is helping him out. He says, the storm's getting real bad out there. Were you able to find him? Yeah, I found him. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's, it's bad, though. There's a there's big monster outside. Don't worry about it. What do you mean, don't worry about it, a big monster? You just get better, okay? The paramedic's like, what do you mean a monster? I'm radioing. <laughs> uh, there's a big monster outside. Nobody go outside, please. Stay inside. Thank uh, you. you. You echoed some the same sentiments. Sheriff Nash had already warned everyone to lock their doors and stay inside yeah. because the storm was coming. But for real this time. Yeah, but for real this time, you make sure everyone's double extra safe. Um, I finish uh, right. chaining the tires, and I go, all right, get in. And okay. you can see it's like all like now sued up for like the snow. <laughs> and um, I go to drive to like skid out and go to drive to the monster. Um, and I try to go find him. Okay. You, uh, Holly, you slide across the, uh, the hood of the car and you get into the passenger seat. Shotgun. shotgun. Yeah, you never get to ride shotgun. <laughs> uh, and uh, Esteban hands you the shotgun. Um, for <laughs> smash. And you <laughs> speed up nice. and start following the, the snowman down the road. Uh, um, Deacon, you and Eddie the Eddie burst through the snow in the back part of the sheriff station. The, the clouds are gray and dark and the, the snowstorm is just making it so you can barely see 10 feet in front of you. Uh, uh, there's, uh, there's probably a big obvious like snowman like divot in the ground, right? Yeah, maybe you want to turn back into your regular form. So, uh, so you don't terrify the, the citizens of town who are already besi besieged by two monsters. You don't want to give them anything else to think about. You transform back into Deacon's human form as you make it back to town. Um, Eddie looks at you expectantly. I go, those tracks, Eddie. That's where the monster's going. We got to follow them. He's big, like you, but I probably you're stronger. You're strong, big strong. He flexes. Eddie, protect. You make a lot of snowmen, Eddie. Eddie hates snowman. Get him. You're gonna love whaling on this guy. Let's go. 
I'm gonna run. He starts running down the street. As we're going, I'm reaching into the back and pulling out uh, alcohol bottles, and I'm shoving the rags in, and, and then I'm give uh, Holly the lighter. I'm like, make a bunch of these. We're gonna make a distraction, <laughs> and uh, go to see if I can find the snowman. Uh, okay, you uh, follow him down the street. You're you're peeling down. He's he's moving uh, pretty slowly, so you actually are starting to like circle him now and just kind of keep clocking his position as you're like doing donuts almost around him. As uh, um as I'm circling him, I'm putting Holly on his side. So as we're going, I just wanted to keep chucking the flaming bottles at him just to keep him occupied and try to slow him down a little more and see if he can start like swiping at us and stuff as I'm going around. Roll to kick ass, Holly. I do. You, you roll act under pressure and then this will be, uh, if you do well enough, you can help her. Hey, that's pretty good. Uh, eight. Nine. Okay. So on, on a mixed success, I will say that you can get plus one, so that nine becomes a ten. However, Esteban, you've just come a little bit too close on one of your passes, and uh, he freaks a now huge, like, tree tree limb almost size stick hand, comes down and smashes into, the, into your windshield side and cracks it, so the visibility was already terrible because of the storm, and now you can barely see anything out of your side of the windshield. Just cracks it, but as you are taking that pass, Holly, you, Esteban gets you way close enough and you're able to psh, flames streak up all alongside him. You see as the as the fire burns him, the snow melts away, but then only reforms stronger and he just grows bigger and bigger every time you do damage to him. I hit the windshield with my wrench uh, to break it out and I go into the glove box and get like aviator goggles to put them on and snap them on. Yeah, wind is starting to blow in towards you, but you, you weather it. Yeah, Holly's, Holly's glasses. Are All right, well, don't hit it. Take. And I guess we just drive around it a bunch. Mm -hmm. As we're running, I tap uh, Eddie on the back and I go, lift me up. He pulls you up onto his back and you uh, you look out the rearview mirror now, Esteban, and you see a full-size Yeti with Deacon on his back boom, boom, running down the main street onto you. I just, uh, and you see the snowman is just raking and destroying like buildings, ripping off windows and, and hinges and shutters and smashing roofs and just going down the street wrecking havoc like the giant uh, marshmallow man from Ghostbusters. All right. I whisper in Eddie's ear, that guy, let's take apart a snowman. And I point. Eddie just runs and he jumps over your car, Esteban, lands in front of you and runs and throws you onto him. Throws me onto the snowman? Yeah. Why would he do that? That he's a Yeti. That's what he does. Boom. He, that's what he understood that to mean. Oh boy. Am I on? I, am where, how big is the head? <laughs> it's pretty big now. Uh, it's He's probably like 20 feet tall. And he Eddie runs up and throws you up onto his back. Deacon, you hang on for dear life. The snow again is the storm is raging all around you. I uh, all right. I guess I'm gonna try to pick up this snowman's head and pull it off his body. I muster every ounce of psychokinetic force that I have in my body, and I'm gonna put it on the the orb that's his head and just try to pluck it and throw it as far as I can away. Roll plus weird. What if that S makes S1 and Holly, you guys are watching this site as you're just trying to. Trying to stay with him. That's gonna be in the a, snow. Uh, trying to keep control. I don't get a plus people. one anymore, do I? Nope. Give me a nine. You, <laughs> you all watch as uh, you are you are eclipsed, and already it's darkness. But then even bigger shadow grows over the the vehicle as his head is <laughs> ripped off and <laughs> slams. Esteban, you <laughs> slam on the brakes, and the head <laughs> rests there in the middle of the street, and the body, <laughs> big snowman body, kind of. Slumps over. And I'm gonna jump and hope that Eddie catches me. Eddie does. <laughs> oh, yes, that was cool. <laughs> Eddie, please never do that again. Take off that other part. You're bigger than me and stronger. I need to rest. And I just <laughs> flop over in the snow. I reverse the car way back and then I kick it into gear and I just go straight through his head. You you see the, the snowman's eyes begin to flitter open and you. <laughs> Drive straight through and puncture and explode his head, and the snow melts all around you. Right before I hit him, I go, it looks like it's gonna be a white Christmas, and then I <laughs> hit the, nice. the head. <laughs> you drive straight through, Is the and hat the rest of the body melt. The hat, uh, you, he ripped the hat off and burned it. Oh, it's burned, okay. Eddie, uh, the Eddie is standing there in the middle of the street, he's just punching the snow. Eddie! 
Eddie, huh? you gotta go. If they see you, they're gonna wanna hurt you. You gotta go. No, Eddie, help. No. Eddie, protect. Eddie, Eddie, we got him, buddy. You gotta go back to your cave. I'll see you soon, okay? Eddie picks you up and gives you a hug. I hug him back. We'll bring you treats. He puts a big hand on the hood of the car and <laughs> like, like, <laughs> smashes it almost. <laughs> Puts, big hand puts, it. puts two big dents into the hood of the car, but like pets it. Love you, love you too, Eddie. And he <laughs> runs and jumps. Uh, and the sn- the storm is still raging ever hard all around you. You guys are standing in the middle of the street, and the snowman is destroyed, but the storm is still raging. <sighs> You're looking around. Oh my God. Does anybody find Sheriff, his body? Uh, Sheriff Nash uh, pulls up um, in uh, in his squad car. He's actually had the paramedic drive him. Um, and he's like, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, okay, I, I know how to drive, but I'm not really super qualified for this. He's like, shut up. <laughs> he gets out of the car. And he's he's like, like, monsters are real. Okay, surprise. <laughs> and he, he he hobbles over to you guys. And says, what the hell happened? Uh, blood ritual. Uh, uh, Hart turned himself into a big snowman because he wanted to be the best elf. <laughs> and that's where we're at now. Big storm. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Okay. <sighs> The storm is is actually picking up ever clo- ever even more picking up. More picking up. More, more and more. Okay, but the snowman is dead and gone. The the snowman is in a big pile of chunky snow, and actually, Holly, as you are looking, you're seeing the the water and ice is beginning to reform. Oh no! It has a it has a heart. Dig through it. Heart has a heart. Nice. Get the heart. And I start digging through the snow to see if I can find like a beating heart. As you're digging through the snow, you you pick up a clump and it just melts through your fingers and and then reforms into solid ice on the ground as the snowman is being being built up more and more. Uh. Holly, you get an, an inkling that if you were going to ask the Secret Masters, you don't have a lot of time to do okay, it. Okay, I would love to do that right now. I would love to ask them what's going on. Okay, you take out your candles. Ah, you... Rapid fire candle lighting! Esteban's running around with his lighter, just lighting all the candles. I got my, I got my torch, I'm like... <laughs> I grab uh, Sheriff Nash is like, whoa, we don't need... No, the last... You said it's evil ritual. I try to put my hand on his mouth. Blackness. All around you, Holly, as you enter your trance and reach in to connect to your secret ghost masters that live in your brain. Uh, the the rest of you see just a faint blue glowing outline all around her, top of her skull. You may roll to contact. Oh, please don't be done. Hey, pretty good. Nice. Uh, 12. Doom. Please help me kill the snowman. He's evil and cold. Blackness all around you, Holly, as the ghosts swirl around your mind and you you reach out for help and the echoes come back to you. He was spurned in his life. A demon of hatred and revenge, revenge, revenge. Harming him will not work, 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 work. You must help him. And you are flung back to life. Okay, here's... It, the snowman is beginning to come back to ice. It reforms now 25, 30 feet tall. The head comes back into place. The, the carrot nose shoots back out. The storm rages ever, ever harder all around you. You guys have maybe a moment to act. I want to run in front of him. You do. Say, wait! The, the storm is blowing all around you. His snowman head looks down at you. I want to help you! Ding with my tiny Borg. Mr. Snowman, I understand that you were wronged in a past life. And I'm waving my hands and being distracting and crazy. Mm-hmm. What is it that you seek? I will be able to help you. I am the best elf. Yes, you he are. Him. You're a wonderful elf. I You're gra- a great elf. I've never met an elf as good as you. I grab Sheriff Hart and I turn him around, I go, tell, tell him he's your best he's elf. Best and I turn elf. around and I point him to the snowman. You're not the best elf. You're never going to be the best elf, you piece of shit. I slap him really hard. When he says that, I want to use the new ability I acquired last time. So, I am allowed to do mental dominion. When I gaze into a normal human's eyes and exert my will over them, roll charm. On a 10 plus, hold three, seven, nine, hold one. I might spend my hold to give them an order. Regular people will follow my order, whatever it is. Ooh, whatever it is. Nice. That's gonna be not enough. 
Wow, bro. Wow. <laughs> Chocolate soda <laughs> experience. <laughs> That's going to be not enough. <laughs> I go, I do this, and then Deacon just passes out in the snow. <laughs> I grab De- Deacon. Deacon spins to you guys, <laughs> and you know that he's about to use one of his new like mind powers just by the fact that you guys have worked with him for so long. He looks Sheriff Nass right in the eyes. A blood vessel bursts in his eye, and it turns completely red, and then blood shoots out his nose, and he goes, oh, I'm going to be sick, and then falls over face first onto the pavement. I grab Deacon by his collar, and I have the sheriff, and I pull them to the, to the other side of my truck, and I hold the sheriff in a headlock, and I try to slap Deacon awake. It's your muscle car, not a truck, right? Yeah, and I and I. Oh, I'm awake. I'm awake. And I turn into the sheriff, and I and I I choke the sheriff until he's knocked unconscious. Right. Okay. Easy enough to do. He's already injured, so you can overpower him easily, uh, and you safely uh, make him unconscious. To distract uh, as, a as safely as you can. Singing Christmas carols while you, all this you're is You're still, happening. you're you're walking backwards. You're doing jingle what? Jingle bells, jingle bells, spreading Christmas cheer. Christmas cheer, love it. We're having so much fun, it's Christmas. Holly, you see actually he begins to shrink. Really? As you start singing. Okay, everybody sing with me, please. I He's, he starts smashing the windows and the walls and as you're, you have your tuning fork out, and you're like, Ding. Ding. Jingle, jingle bells, bells, jingle bells, everyone please The help. snow, the snow whips all around him. I oh, open up. How fun it is to ride on a I run open And sleigh. open both my car doors and turn jingle the car on and turn the radio on. Bells, and I blast the Christmas all station the all the way up. <laughs> ding, ding, go, oh, what fun it is to ride. In a one horse open sleigh. He's starting to shrink more and more yeah. as he's as he's go. He's still marching down the thoroughfare, but now the the storm is dying around him. But he's kind of like f- eyes fixed on you as he's marching slower <laughs> and slower and Ding. and melting. You guys are watching large sections of ice and snow falling off of him. Listen, and then I push Deacon out as the sheriff out in front of him. How tall is he now? Uh, he's probably still like ten feet feet tall. Oh my God. I want to. Uh, I take like a, a broomstick or something and I put. My Santa head on it. And I just, I limp over, just on death's door. And I look up into his beady snowman eyes. And I say, Heart, I'm sorry. You were never best elf with Thomas around. I didn't see it at the time. But I knew how much you loved the holidays. And... Now knowing how much it meant to you, I know Thomas was a stellar cop, but you had the heart, and I'm sorry we spurned you. And I take the stick and I put my Santa hat on top of his head. <laughs> it rests upon his head. Are and you I, singing along with Holly? I am, and I say, dashing through the snow, oh, heart is exactly. my best elf. Please don't break the town. This is I get a megaphone now. out of the trunk and I put it in front of Deacon's mouth. Bells on Bartels ring. Sorry Thomas died. It's going okay. He he starts to shrink more and more. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Hey, Sheriff Nash puts a puts a hand on the hood of the car and goes over and says. Jingle bells, <laughs> jingle bells. Come on, buddy. Jingle all the way. Hey, it's just so we all die. Oh, and Deacon that. just, as you're singing, he just falls face forward <laughs> into the snow and passes out. And you all, you all sing and and cheer with this with this Christmas uh, joy, and the storm dies around you, and in the middle of the street is just a regular old snowman with a Smiley face, uh, frozen to, to the ground. That's terrifying. The storm whoo, dies away, uh, and the sunlight begins to peek through again. The town grows quiet. The uh, the paramedic guy sticks his head out of the squad car and goes, "Wow, that was crazy!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sher- Sheriff Nash turns to him and says, "Shut up! Shut up!" <sighs> Nobody touched that snowman. <laughs> Leave it where it is. I pick up Deacon and I put him in the passenger seat of the wind of the car. 
Um, you guys look up to the roof as Eddie the Yeti is standing up there, and he just lets out a big, I love my friends! And he jumps down and <laughs> smashes the snowman to pieces, and <laughs> starts smashing it. Sheriff Nash is like, what in the goddamn hell? <laughs> and he's like reaching for his uh, revolver on no, his no, head. No, 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 I grab his wrist and I put it down, <laughs> and I go, that's a teammate. This is just one of those things, huh? Yeah. He, he turns and he looks at you and waves and says, Goodbye, family. Eddie, always love you. Love you too, Eddie. Love you too, Eddie. And he just runs off into the, into the woods. The paramedic guy oh. passes out <laughs> in, his, in his seat. Sheriff Naps looks up at you guys and says, Thank you. This town would be destroyed if you guys hadn't shown up. Uh, don't worry, it's uh, what do we do? And as I'm doing that, I take out another one of the little fire things and I set it down. I put a little stand on it and I take out a little pot and I put some water in it and I take out my little pouch of the cocoa <laughs> and I flick it and I pour it and let it get all hot and I make a nice steamy hot cocoa. And I go, I look at my watch and I go, Merry Christmas. Aww. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. And I pass it out to everyone as we sip. Ooh, that's hot. Yeah, you guys, you guys sit on the hood of uh, Esteban's bullet, which is now smashed and dented <laughs> to pieces. Two of the windows are completely broken. Uh, Deacon is half, or actually three quarters of the way dead, passed out, uh, leaning back as you and Holly sit down and sip a, a nice cup of, of Christmas hot cocoa. Um, as the the townspeople begin to open their doors, and uh, somebody said, "Did we hear caroling? Dashing <laughs> through the snow <laughs> on a one horse open sleigh, over the fields we go, laughing all the way." And the oh, townspeople of Sharpwood, Minnesota, uh, sing you guys off into the night. That you take your your well deserved rest and enjoy what remains of this Christmas, and you will find out what your monster is next week. We did it! Oh. I knew it! I knew it the whole time, but I didn't want to look like stupid for just being nice to the snow. The answer was Christmas cheer the yeah, whole time. Yeah, it's the Grinch, duh! Oh, I forgot the marshmallows! <laughs>